Welcome back to Refit and Sale. My name's George Isted, and this is Project Lottie, I've decided to call it. That's because she's called Charlotte. I am in the middle of a refit on a Contessa 32 and uh, currently working on the cockpit at the moment. So the next job that I have got to do is some sanding to prepare the surfaces here for some extra glass to be added in. So in the last episode, I removed all the old teak face plywood from these recesses around the cockpit here. What I need to do is fill up these recesses with something because I'm planning to put new decking in, which is gonna go all the way up to the edge. These bits of deck are reasonably solid. They flex a little bit and I'd like to stiffen them up a touch. And at some point the locker lids themselves I need to do some serious strengthening on those because they are very, very, very flexible. So um, they're going to go off to the workshop at some point on a rainy day, but whilst it's sunny, I'm going to prep these for adding some glass. So my plan is to uh, just go over it with some 80 grit. That's going to um, give a good key. And then I'm going to lay up some glass in there. I shall do the rest with some filler to eventually leave me with a nice flat surface on which I can redo the decking. I really do like my Merca Deiros, I think it's called the sander I'm using here, but I'm not wearing a mask. And even with the very, very good vacuum extraction that I've got on the uh, sander, I really should be wearing a mask. So please do as I say, not as I do. You've only got one pair of lungs. I've just had a bit of a tidy up and you can see I've finished all the sanding here so um, uh, getting into the corners was um, easy with the Dremel and a bit of uh, hand sanding but in the two panels at the front that were refitted on Sikaflex or Sarvatac or some other rubbery sealant I need to remove all the rubber because um, the epoxy is not going to stick to that at all. So, um, so the surfaces are pretty much all prepped for me to put some glass in. It's just one thing I am going to do today before I completely finish up and go and have a cup of tea is to pre-measure the um, size of the glass sheets that I'm going to need. It's time to cut up some glass now. I've got my measurements. I'm going to be using some combi mat, which is uh, this stuff. It's um, biaxial on one side and it's got CSM on the other side and it's kind of sewn together. Um, so I just need to get cutting. One of my most useful tools I bought fairly recently before I went sailing was um, an electric cutter. Saves so much time, it's fantastic. If you're doing lots of glass work, go and buy yourself one of these. They're brilliant. Right, so 19 by 35. Back on the boat now and one of the joys of working in a boat yard in England is occasional rain showers which is not ideal if you're working outside. I do have some inside space I could put the boats into but um, because of the cost of that sometimes if you're just doing a little bit of work you do with this which is go tenting. So uh, I got a couple of trestles out the workshop, spinnaker pole, clear tarp and uh, I can work happily outside here. Also means uh, I can take the um, locker lids back to the workshop not have to worry about wet getting into the boat so um, I was thinking about making temporary covers for the lockers but it saves me doing that and uh, now I don't have to wor worry about the weather at all so what I'm going to do next is wipe down all the bits that are going to get some glass added to them with some acetone make sure they're nice and clean uh, I'm going to roll out the glass dry just to check it all fits and trim as necessary uh, and then I can mix up some resin and uh, lay it all down there is one essential piece of equipment that I brought from the workshop and that is my kneeler which is designed for old people when they go gardening um, but uh, when you get the wrong side of 40 this is an absolute lifesaver.
Normally you want to measure twice and cut once, but in this situation, sometimes it's just easier to measure it and get it cut roughly to the right size. And then I can bring the glass down to the boat and trim it exactly to size because uh, getting it exactly to the right size by measuring it and then pre-cutting it in the workshop was just going to take too long. So uh, this is a far easier method, especially with my electric cutters. For this piece of work, I'm using an all-purpose laminating and bonding resin. It's made by a company called uh, Grit, Grit, something like that. I, uh, I'm not sure that's how you pronounce it, but it's called Ampro, the resin itself. And uh, three to one mix. It has slow fasteners, hard fasteners. You can put additives in it and use it for all sorts of bits and bobs around the uh, boat. Um, what's quite nice about it is uh, it doesn't blush. Uh, you don't get an amine blush on it that you can get on some other resins. I've laid up all the glass that I'm going to lay up on these areas so uh, you can see how it looks. Uh, obviously not done the locker lids because I want to do some work on the bottom of the locker lids before I do the tops. But uh, this epoxy is really good stuff that I've used in that if I lay up more uh, coatings on top of it within two or three days it does still create a chemical bond however it is Friday and I don't plan to work this weekend so I'm going to chuck some um, peel ply on that and uh, and then I can just rip that off and start the filling process next week. Back in the workshop again and I'm slightly embarrassed about the mess I can now see behind me um, I really need to find some time to tidy that up but I'm here with the locker lids so uh, if you remember they are very very flexible so um, I need to do something about that. Last time I had a couple of these to repair um, they were very similar they were off a slightly earlier Contessa but what I did was to effectively put a couple of stringers into them um, so I'm going to get some plywood uh, I'm going to rip up some plywood on the um, table saw and put uh, probably a couple of strips of plywood in there I think it's about 10 or 12 mil I've got through in the other room I'm going to go and take a look and I'll do the same one or two one might be enough on this one to be fair uh, and then I can lay glass up over that stringer when this gets stood on what I don't want it to do is start flexing in the middle um, it only had two um, hinges on it so I might put a third hinge on it when I refit it once the decking's all done cut my 12 mil bits of plywood up and then I have rounded over the edges because as we all know glass does not like going around sharp corners so uh, they are going to sit quite nicely I'll just point that down a bit there we go they're just going to sit quite nicely down in the tops of these locker lids so um, the next step for me is to clean off all of this to get back to nice clean glass and then I can uh, bond these in on a nice flat surface that I've got here uh, probably put some weight on it just to make sure it stays completely flat because the, the desk is totally flat um, and then I can lay some glass up over it and uh, we're going to be looking good I can do a trial fit I've just spent a wonderful hour or two cleaning up the inside of these locker lids outside I didn't record it because grinding polyester is a horrible job at the best of times. This had a mixture of paint and gel coat, flow coat on the inside of it, which you can't really bond to. It's uh, it's now all off apart from a few little bits and pieces, but um, for this application, it's gonna be absolutely fine. So I've marked up where I want my little uh, wooden formers, stringers to go in. So the next job is to um, glue them on. Once that's gone off, I can lay up glass, uh, flip it over and then start looking at all the other repairs and bits and pieces I've got to do because um, this one in particular has got pretty mashed if you look in there where there's had there's, there's been multiple um, uh, catches there over the years they've obviously pulled out and broken and that is a little bit weak um, so I'm gonna have to grind out some of these cracks same deal there that's had a repair uh, and you can see on the inside where it's kind of all damaged so um, 
that will get ground out and uh, I'll lay up some glass in there and then it can get re-gel coated um, and then it'll be ready to uh, go back on the boat. So I'm just uh, mixing up some epoxy. This stuff is three to one, so it's dead easy if you use a measuring cup. Or you can use scales if you want a uh, an amount that isn't on the uh, measuring cup, but the measuring cup makes it super easy. Because you just fill up to one line. It's got three to one, four to one, and five to one, I think. Oh, no, two to one, three to one, and four to one on the outside of the cups. If you're going to be doing some bonding of wood onto another substrate with epoxy with fillers, before you put the fillers in, it's worth brushing on some of that epoxy straight onto the wood because the wood will absorb it and it will allow you to get a slightly stronger bond. It also means that when you put the fillers into it and apply the fillies, fillers onto the wood, the wood then won't be so inclined to pull the resin out of the filler and again you'll get a stronger bond because of that. Well, I'm back on the boat and as you can hear, the rain cover is doing its job. I'm holding the mic up just to speak over the top of the rain. So I'm going to uh, remove this peel ply that you can see here um, and then start filling in these pads with some epoxy mixed up with some uh, low density filler. Um, it's going to take probably a couple of fills to get that to a reasonable surface at least. So uh, there's going to be a bit of filling and fairing and filling and fairing. Um, but first of all, we have the very pleasing job of pulling off the peel ply, which is really quite nicely satisfying for some reason. So we can just tug it at the edge and we end up with a lovely, clean surface. Which has a texture on it, all ready to take the next layer of... Uh, layer of filler. As you can see behind me, the first fill is now done, so uh, I'm going to jump in the van after a cup of tea and head back to the unit and see how the locker lids are doing. This first fill doesn't need to be perfect, I'm going to give it a buzz over with a sander tomorrow just to flat it all down and see how it's looking. It will need a second fill definitely, it's whether it needs a third fill or not remains to be seen. Hopefully I can get away with two because it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect because it isn't the finished surface, it just needs to be pretty flat for the uh, deck to go down on. So um, we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. Taking the weights off the locker lids and uh, these have stiffened up just with these little bits of uh, plywood uh, considerably. So, um, so that's all good. Uh, the next job is to cut up some glass. So I've had a quick measure up to work out how much I need to lay up glass in that direction um, across these uh, wooden stringers. I don't think stringers is really the right word. Um, strengthening pieces, formers, whatever. Um, anyway, they do the job. So uh, I just need to cut some glass up and then I can get laminating.
this is all cured now so I can pull the peel ply off and then I need to carefully trim back the glass uh, using my uh, multi-tool and uh, now I can flip it over and do some work on the other side. This is always really satisfying. There's a few little bits that I need to clean up where um, I couldn't get the peel ply to lie completely flat. But on the whole, it's worth doing because it removes a little bit of excess resin and gives me a nice clean surface. given these a little trim all the way around and actually having tested how stiff these are now there's a huge amount more structure in them um, I don't think I need to lay up any glass on the inside so if you recall on the boat I put glass in the recess panels before I put filler in there um, these are so stiff now I don't need to I'm back doing cockpit stuff I've got the locker lids here back in the cockpit you can see where I've had the first fill on the top of there uh, one of the things I want to do before I flat that down and put another coat of filler in just to finish it off is I need to trim the back pieces here and I knew I'd have to do this because you've got the lip that is around the locker lid I'll just take you down so you can see uh, there's a lip here um, which just stops some um, water getting down when you uh, have a wave over the boat or lots of rain um, so I just need to trim those stringers back very slightly um, and I wanted to do it afterwards because then I can get a really nice kind of snug fit down on the uh, on the top there so I just probably got to take these edges off and what I can do is by putting it on there and kind of moving it around a little bit it will leave a little mark where I need to sand some take some material off so just there and just there this back locker to fit as well as I think I'm going to get it um, what I realized about halfway through this is I'm trying to get it flush with an imperfect surface in many respects because this piece at the back here it rises up in the middle and then drops down again um, and the front surface is not completely flat as well because you remember these are kind of 70s boats so the um, the mold making back in those days was not as precise as it would be on a modern boat where everything's kind of CNC made. Um, but I've got the top pretty flush. I've got the front fairly flush apart from on that corner, but I just can't get it back any further without it disturbing the levels somewhere else. So um, I think it's a case of making it the best you can within the realms of what is possible. I was even removing some of the original uh, lid here to try and get it down um, flush so I don't think it ever fitted brilliantly well um, but I think that's going to be as good as I can make it for now without spending hours and hours on it which um, I don't think it really warrants it's uh, it's pretty good uh, and as good as it's going to get for now now I've just got to do the big locker I think I'm done with this one now as well you can see I've just trimmed some bits off here and I've got it to go reasonably flush it's not perfect because again I'm working with kind of imperfect um, outlying areas around here so I think once this has got hinges on it and clips on it it will kind of pull down and be um, as flat as I'm going to make it so uh, so I'm going to give this all a bit of a sand because I've still got the two locker lids to sand on the top just to flatten them down and then they are going to be ready for another skimmer filler.
if there's one thing you do a lot of in my line of work, that is sanding. So uh, I'm back in the cockpit. This is the second fill you can see behind me. And uh, I just want to flat it all down. So I pulled out my shorter longboard. Um, these are flexi sanders, they're really good. Um, and uh, I've put the um, extra piece of metal in which basically holds it absolutely flat. Um, if you take that out, it will conform to whatever shape it is you're sanding. Um, so they're really good for doing bottom jobs, fairing in. Um, uh, or if you want something flat, as I said, I'll put that in and, uh, and I can then sand away on this surface and knock down all the high spots without having to worry about uh, knocking down any of the low spots. Um, so I'm going to do that on the bigger areas and then the smaller areas I'll probably have to use a piece of wood uh, and a bit of sandpaper. Um, so, uh, so yeah, more sanding for me. Yay. That's the sand of the second fill done on the cockpit. It's got the odd low spot, but most importantly, I wanted to knock down any high spots. I think that's probably gonna be kind of okay for now. Um, there's a big high spot at the back, but that is in the original molding. Um, I'm gonna to have to do something with that. I think I'm probably gonna to have to take some of the height off it uh, just to get the new decking to sit flat down. As you can see here, I've just ground back the damaged area that I highlighted previously on those four bits of locker lid. And uh, I'm going to lay up a little bit of glass. So I have pre-cut some uh, little pieces of uh, combi mat again. So I'm gonna wash those in there with a bit of resin uh, and then I can sand it back again once that's all gone off and then uh, look to get some gel coat, which is the right colour and uh, finish them off and uh, they may end up looking rather like new when I'm done. What highlights the fact that these areas need a little bit of reinforcement and repair is you can see now I've laid some uh, resin on top of the uh, the area. Yeah, the glass around the edges uh, either side you uh, you can see it's kind of like the normal colour uh, but the area where the fixings have gone through has been flexed and stressed over the years and uh, has got that uh, slightly lighter colouring. The way I quite often do repairs like this is actually to uh, lay the glass up and wet it out on a piece of plastic like this because it's just much much easier and quicker than trying to do it on a vertical surface although I suppose I could put it on its end and then once everything's kind of all wetted out I can pick those pieces of glass up carefully and then smush them into place where they need to go. Here's one of the locker lids now I've cleaned it up I've just ground back again on the new glass that I laid up on there. The only thing that's left to do is to do the gel coat. Now I think what I'm going to do because there's quite a few repairs on this is just going to re-gel the whole thing. I had some gel coat from another Contessa. Here it is, there's the sample and uh, I mixed it up and let it cure and it's pretty close but it's not quite close enough. There's a bit more grey in this lid here so I'm going to see if I can get a mate to um, colour match it and uh, make me up a batch because there's a whole bunch of other little gel repairs around the cockpit that could be done. Say a very nice man has made me up some beautiful colour match gel coat. So this slightly bluey grey here with a touch of green and a touch of many different colours, he said, uh, is a perfect match for the gel that's in the cockpit on the boat. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, because these areas that I filled are still very slightly low below the surface, is I'm going to thicken up some of this gel coat slightly and then put some in there, let that harden off, uh, and then I'll be able to re-gel the whole thing. You can see here the fill that I did yesterday has cured and I've sanded it back so I've now got a nice flat surface on which to re-gel all the surfaces on this locker lid. At some point I also need to um, flow coat the inside but I'll do that afterwards. So what I'm going to do next is catalyse some gel coat and then put two layers on by hand with a brush. Uh, I'm going to let that cure up a little bit. Um, that will still leave a sticky surface because um, there's no wax in this. Uh, and I'm going to put another two coats on a little bit later on today. 
let that cure and then I've got plenty of material there to flat back and uh, finish off to a nice shiny beautiful finish hopefully. the boat with some fairly shiny if you can see the reflection uh, lock lids um, the gel work is okay I'm not super pleased with it to be honest with you there's some little imperfections in it but um, not a lot of it's actually going to be on show I just wanted to look fairly decent so um, you can see all the edges and the fronts have been re-gelled and the insides have been flow coated so they're all kind of um, pretty and ready to go back on which brings this video to an end I'm afraid I didn't show the whole process of kind of um, finishing off the gel coat it was just going to take too long and I have to weigh up um, actually doing proper work with videoing me doing proper work so I didn't show everything but very briefly um, I think I videoed myself uh, dry sanding it to um, not it down kind of flat um, and then I go to wet sanding starting with 800 grit, 1000 grit, 1200 grit uh, and then it gets um, polished with the machine polisher and some uh, some uh, heavy duty compound uh, and that makes it all nice and shiny so um, so yeah uh, it's been a nice little project I'm very pleased that this cockpit I can say is kind of done in terms of it being ready for some decking to be put on which will be the subject of a separate video um, but I've been getting on with lots of other stuff whilst I've been doing the cockpit as well um, so watch out for the next films and thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time <laughs>